And welcome once again to Living in the 21st Century. Joining me here again is the Senior Pastor, Reverend Joanna Sleathen of First Christian Union Church of Boston. And today we're going to be talking about um, the Christian life and families and friends. My brother, it's good to have you on the show again. Um, I, I, always, I always love having you on because we've got some <laughs> very interesting topics to speak about. Yep. You know, brother, family, family life is everything to a Christian um, father, mother. Um, family life is essential, is important, is important. We love to do the best to make sure we are not only pleasing our families, but more importantly, we pleasing God in the decisions we make. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it leaves me to wonder that the more a person dedicate and commit themselves to God and life to God, for some reason, either some family member close to you, it could be a wife, it could be your children, someone close, very close to you, um, it could be your best friend, your bosom buddy, are the ones then, for some reason, rip your heart apart. They try to destroy you, they make you a public embarrassment, and in the process of doing that, people lose confidence in, in that, that leader of the church or the leader of the family, and the first thing comes out their mouth, well, this guy called himself a Christian, look at his son, look at his daughter, what kind of Christian is him? It's like the world just waiting to destroy you and better believe it or not the same family members know what they're doing and they get pleasure in doing what they do sometimes they're the ones who come out and call you hypocrite pharisee sadducee you know <laughs> and this is serious this is really really serious because it is to destroy your spiritual legacy with god and this is a demonic entity that just trying to rip you apart. So, <laughs> Pastor, elaborate a little bit for atmospheres like these. <laughs> well, this is something that we have to anticipate as Christians because the Bible cautions us that we need to be aware of the fact that the, the enemy is moving around, working around, r running around, looking for somebody to devour. And he is going to use whatever means necessary, whatever means available to him. Mm -hmm. And if that um, family member or friend or neighbor or whoever it might be, is available to him to use on you, then he's going to do it to bring you down. Remember, the devil is playing to, for keeps. Mm -hmm. He's not making any joke. The scripture warns us that he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, John That's 10, right. 10. But I am very glad that it did not stop there so Jesus said, but I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. So the idea of people bringing us down is inevitable. The devil will use whoever is available, mm -hmm. but it is up to us to be on our guard, mm -hmm. to be very, very careful. Because if we are not careful, he's going to bring us down. And he's going to use the closest to us. For example, let's go to the book of Genesis. God created man and he gave him everything that his heart, God know, knew that his heart would desire. He gave it to him, including power. And yet, what did that, that the devil do? He came in the form of a serpent and the serpent pretending to be in his in her in their best interest. Mm -hmm. God does know. Mm -hmm. God is lying to you. So he is on your side now. He is on their side. And then what did he do? He used the person closest to him 
to Adam to bring him down. She brought him the food and or the fruit and then he ate. And the word of God remains the same as it is today. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. And so it is up to us. It was up to Adam to refuse, but he succumbed to, to the to the um, to the attack that he got through his wife, and there is the human race as we have it today. Mm-hmm. Well, yes, um, I'm I'm still trying to fight through this audio, but I'm hearing very little bits of what you're saying. But my, my oh, next okay. question is: when this when this kind of dilemma happens, uh, this spread of distraction creeps in the family or even the church. And the devil and his demonic forces start to use that paintbrush of evilness to smirge that, that paint of evilness all over the preacher's face or the, the family member's face. And you get the gossip going around, man. I, I, I thought that this was a guy they can trust. Now, this, this, this environment plays an integral role on the psyche of the men and women of God. They know who they are. They know what they're going through. But in the physical realm, when words start to get out and the disgustedness start to speak on you and people start to uh, point fingers at you, you find that those Christians, and I talk about the sincere Christians, start to fall, and I find that there were a lot of men and women of God who, who were on fire, and probably still is on fire. But this great embarrassing spirit come to wipe you out of your legacy. And it, it often brings me down to Job. Um, and th- this is why I think Christians has to be very vigilant. Come on, when, God, when Job wife told him, listen, are you still going to maintain your integrity? Look what you're going through. Curse God and die. Right? And the essential is that when you are spiritually gripped with God, you got to be prepared to rebuke the enemy at all costs. You you got to you got to rebuke. And sometimes you may have got to rebuke your wife, your son, your daughter. You just got to do it. Because, and sometimes you've got to do it publicly too. Mm-hmm. Because that atmosphere paves the boundary for serious spiritual warfare. And I believe that in this modern 21st century, spiritual warfare is on the rampage. That even the few committed, sincere, Born again, blood wash, Holy Ghost, spirit fill, anointed, appointed men and women of God. They are getting, they are getting fire. They, they, the enemy is raging like a raging wolf, just to destroy. And we want to bring to the attention of the man and woman who are in Christ, that they have to stand firm. Because we we, we are in some serious times, Pastor, and the truth is that even though there are those who love to worship God and serve God in spirit and truth, the the way of the world, the way of demonic forces, it's a raging battle, and they are losing, they are losing the course. And this is the time where they must be strong and stand stand, firm. important as a child of God. You used the word a minute ago, vigilance. That's a very important word to be in our psyche at all times because <clears throat> you cited a passage of scripture, Ephesians chapter 6, that we are not fighting against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the works of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
And so when we have this in our mind that we are in a warfare, that we are fighting not physical battles, and that's where a lot of us fail mm -hmm. as men and women of God because an attack comes to us. We try to deal with it on the human level mm -hmm. instead of, of recognizing that it is spiritual warfare and that needs to be dealt with on the spiritual level. Mm -hmm. Let's get closer to this. When David would want, would want to fight the Philistines, he went to God and asked God, should I go up against them tomorrow? And God would say yes or no, as the case might be. And that's what we need to do. Sometimes we want to react with vengeance, with revenge. But remember this, when we take matters into our own hands, we are usurping the authority of God. God said, leave it to him. He will take vengeance for us. I will repay. He said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. So when we are fighting against these entities, we have to remember that it is a spiritual warfare and the devil is only after our soul. I was reading something this morning and it, it, the little caption said this, if there was not something special in you, the devil would not be fighting you. And we have to always remember who we are. We are children of God. And once we are in this physical body, the devil is going to fight us until the end. And so Jesus asked the question, when the son of man comes back, will he find faith in the earth? So we want to make sure that we are in faith when he comes back. And so we have to be vigilant and diligent in serving him. Right. I, I, I just got a glimpse very spoke about spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the Christians today really, and do you think the Christians today are really aware of spiritual warfare? Uh, do, do they just talk about it? Do they understand what it is to be spiritually engaged in a battle that is not of the natural realm, but in the spiritual realm? where they know that they have to gird themselves thoroughly with the word of God, um, like the apostle said, to, Paul said, to, to wear on a breastplate on your heart and bind it around your neck. Mm -hmm. do, do the average Christian really understand what spiritual warfare is like? I know very well that there, is a, that there are a Christian this is a part of this spiritual life. What is your take on that? Well, in, in, in my thinking, I believe a lot of people are not really up to par, so to speak, mm -hmm. when it comes to spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. They read about it mm -hmm. in the scripture. They hear about it from the pulpit. Mm -hmm. But what they are going through, mm -hmm. they don't regard it. Right. as spiritual warfare, and so they just pass over it. But let me say to our listening mm -hmm. audience today, mm -hmm. our viewing audience today, that anything that is going to bring you down is an attack from the enemy. Yes. Anything. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. You woke up this morning. When you went to bed last night, everything was nice with you and your wife. You got up this morning and everything is still good. All of a sudden you went to the kitchen and she's in the bedroom. She said something to you. You respond in a certain way because you thought you heard something else. Yes. So you responded according to what you think you heard. Right. Then she gets upset. And then in turn, what happens? You get upset because you are thinking she said something else. And when she did say something else, and all of a sudden, 
you all have a little spat going on, mm -hmm. not realizing, wait a minute, wait a minute, stop it here, stop it here, let's stop it, because the enemy is trying to get in yes. and, and split us apart. And those are the kind of things that people need to be conscious of. Mm -hmm. He's walking about, mm -hmm. seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to be you. Right. But if you allow him, if you give him an inch, he will take a mile. So we have to be conscious of that at all times. Right. So, so th therefore, then, it is very imperative that the young babe in Christ, as they accept Christ, they should be nourished in a way that spiritual warfare is something that will come your way. If you're going to walk according to the will of God, you will be faced with spiritual warfare. The, and I think that we should have the engagement of conversations in the church, in Bible teachings, what spiritual warfare is all about, what to look for, and what to anticipate. I say that because it's something that is hardly taught now in churches. I, every time I look, and they read about churches, they, they're, they're asking, oh, we need a Bible teacher, we need a, a worship leader, we need this and we need that, and here is the criteria. We want someone with a master's or a PhD in divinity or something, mm -hmm. right? But yeah. the fundamentals of what you should know as a Christian is not embodied in that. You can't have a vibrant church. You can't have a potent church. You can't have a worshiping church unless the worshipers knows about spiritual warfare, knows about the, the, the tactics of the enemy. And if, I'll tell you, if the devil is going to destroy the church, the first thing he's going to destroy is your praise and worship team. He is the architect of praise and worship. That, what he, that was his purpose in heaven. His mm -hmm. first order and call in heaven. And if he can creep in your praise and worship team, he's going to destroy the whole church. The praise and worship team is the nucleus of the church. It's the team that connected to the Holy Spirit and received from the Holy Spirit and dispatches what they receive from the Holy Spirit onto the congregation. That, what, that, that is the essence of the praise and worship team. And we have... And I've seen, I see on YouTube, I see it on all different um, programs yeah. with praise and worship teams. And when you have the spirit of discernment, mm -hmm. you can tell the true sincere ones from the ones who are just Not practicing sure. something that ain't meant to be. They want to run up and down the scale and say, no, good. But the reality, it's all self. There's, there's no sensitivity or gravitation or anointing in the song. When a praise and worship team is, in, is anointed and empowered by God, the, 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 the vibes that come out of their mouth in singing touches the heart. It touches the soul. It makes things happen. It, it brings deliverances. you got to revolve. you got a praise and worship team on fire for the Holy Spirit. Demons come out screaming and and, and people fall down on their knees and start to give their souls to God because something is happening. The preacher ain't preached nothing yet, but something authoritative is happening by the Holy Spirit that made you subject yourself to the Holy Spirit. The anointing is there. And we don't get that anymore. Um, everything is sounds good based on the secular way of doing things, and it sounds like everybody get a one-minute high. You know, the clapping sing good, but the absence of the Holy Spirit just isn't there. Just well, isn't there. One, one, of, one of the things we forget that we have to be worshiping the Lord and not putting on a show. Yes, you absolutely. See, a lot of times people end up entertaining mm -hmm. instead of worshiping amen and we have to avoid that kind of a thing in our churches 
We are not there to entertain. We are there to worship one person and one person alone. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The enemy will come in and he's going to fight. You mentioned about warfare and we need to be taught. Yes. Jesus, where before he left, in John 14, he told the people, his disciples, I'm going to leave. Mm -hmm. And he, he tried to comfort them. In John 15, he discussed their relationship and how he wanted them to be one with him and they with him and the father. In 16, mm -hmm. he taught them about the problems that was mm -hmm. to come. Yes. So warfare is something that we need to be constantly aware of. The church is in the middle of a warfare in a battle and we have to fight until the end. We cannot give up right now. No, sir. That, that's yeah. correct. One of the other things too, uh, that is essential again in the Christian life. We hear both the Christians and non-Christians often when they get into trouble, recite a Psalms. You know, mm. They just recite a Psalms. And reciting, reciting the word of God is fine. It's fine. But it's more than just reciting the word of God. Your heart has to be in tune and embodied with what you say. If you're going to recite the Psalms, you've you got to be reciting it from your spirit. Um, it has to be meaningful. You know, I, I listen to, to pastors using the words like, you know, God is trying to tell you something. God don't try to tell anyone anything. He either tell you or he simply do it. Don't. We hear many pastors, you know, and, and, and Ravens and so forth preaching and the stuttering. And, 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 you know, God, God is, uh, 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 God didn't tell you tongue either. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when God sent uh, Moses up to Egypt to ask Pharaoh to relief, relief, release his children, Moses had a Titan issue and he sent his brother Aaron because Pharaoh then had no excuse. He had to get the word straight the way it was meant to be. And God don't come with a Titan to no one. He is clear. He, he, he ain't got a disability. He speaks with a clear voice. Um, you don't got to study to find words. You don't got to say that God is trying to do this. Because God ain't trying to do nothing. The other thing is that God don't want us to, to pray in vain repetition because he said if you do that, it's that like you never believe in, in first place. God, 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 I mean, the Holy Spirit is so straightforward in how he says things and how he wants us to function effectively as a Christian. That we should got to be, um, I wonder, Lord, what, what, what is this happening? I, 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 and just lost. We, God, children can't be lost. And if you are, if a person is calling themselves a Christian, and they're finding themselves in a lost position, they have to question their spiritual integrity with God. And these, these are important things to do if you're going to be on mark for the Holy Spirit and doing what he wants us to do. Because we live in this 21st century where we see a widespread dilution of the word of God. If, if, if we had to enjoy God, the benefits and the blessings of God, there are two passages of scripture that we have to be, be, that has to become part of us. Number one, it's Psalm 112, verse one. How joyful are those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying him Amen. or obeying his commandment. Amen. And Psalm 37, verse four, it says, delight thyself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Glory Amen. to God. So when you are delighting in what he says and delighting in him, 
then there's no other way that there's no way any anything can come against you except God allows it. Amen. You are going to be blessed and blessed abundantly. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> but my brother, this half hour flies a little bit too fast. I know, too fast. <laughs> Praise but, God. But, but I have, I have, have the final word, word in, um, to, to our audience, to our audience um, in letting them know the importance of serving God in spirit and truth. Yes. There is no other thing that is important in life. In fact, Jesus asked the question, what shall he profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The most important th decision one can make is to receive Jesus Christ as his Savior and Lord. Make him Lord of your life from this moment. Praise God. Once you do that, then you are on your way to glory. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. Well, brother, we come to our half hour. Yes. Uh, it's, it's always educational um, to the public when it comes to the word of God from you. And Amen. I want to say thank you for being on the show. On, until the next two weeks, I want to yes. say to all my audience, have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Okay.